What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS3 tutorial. So once again, we have a new firmware update for the PS3 version 4.90. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a full guide on how to jailbreak the PS3 from start to finish on that firmware 4.90 or lower. So the PS3 scene is in a bit of trouble at the moment because the BG tool set that we've been using for the past you know, few updates to jailbreak our PS3s, it's a really good comprehensive tool set for jailbreaking the PS3 that makes things much, much easier. Unfortunately, it's currently down at the moment and the developers behind it are having some trouble getting the tool set back up and running for people. So this is kind of inconvenient when a new firmware update comes out because we can't currently use that tool set. Now there are fake versions or dumped versions going around that you know some people have had success with using those instead. However, those are not recommended to be used because they do not contain the correct checks and balances built into the tool set because they're incomplete dumps, which basically means you have a much higher risk of bricking your PS3 if you use one of those, you know, cloned versions of the BG tool set. I think there's some Russian one going around and some other ones going around. So I would not recommend using those and I'm not going to be using the BG tool set in this video for that reason. So that does mean that this tutorial is going to be a bit more complicated because we're going to have to jailbreak the PS3 without using the BG toolset. So there's a lot more steps involved. And if you're looking for more details on why you shouldn't be using these third party versions of the BG toolset, then check out Wildcard's post on PSX Place. It goes into a lot of detail about the issues with using these dumped versions of the BG toolset. So I'll leave that down in the video description. So first things first, for jailbreaking your PS3, you want to head into the settings and head down to the system settings and make sure that the system information says that you're on firmware version 4.90 or lower. So I think it's anywhere from about 3.55 to 4.90, then you can follow this tutorial. So what we're going to do here is then head up to automatic updates and make sure that that is turned off. Okay, so there's currently two ways to jailbreak your PS3. You can install the full custom firmware, the full jailbreak, which is an untethered exploit. So the exploit is persistent. Every time you reboot the system, you'll still have the exploit running. Whereas you also have another exploit called the PS3 hen exploit, which is a tethered exploit, which means when you restart the PS3, you have to relaunch the exploit, but it only takes a few seconds. They both offer a similar level of functionality, although custom firmware does allow you to do a little bit more than what PS3 Hen allows you to do. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the full custom firmware, but I will also have a tutorial for PS3 Hen in the future, which I'll leave in the cards and in the description if the video is out by the time you're watching this one. So in terms of installing custom firmware on your PS3, not all PS3 models are compatible. So fat model PS3s, those are compatible. You can install custom firmware on a fat PS3. Slim PS3s, those are 50-50. The older model slims are compatible with custom firmware. The newer model slims are not compatible with custom firmware. I'll show you guys how you can check if your PS3 slim is compatible in just a minute. And super slims are not compatible with custom firmware. So you will not be able to install the full jailbreak on a super slim. However, the PS3 Hen exploit works on all PS3 models. So if you have a PS3 that is not compatible with custom firmware, you can instead install PS3 Hen and it offers a similar level of functionality to custom firmware anyway. So again, I'll leave the link to a PS3 Hen tutorial in the description once it is available. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So first of all, if you're on a slim, we need to make sure that your slim is compatible with custom firmware. The easiest way to do this is to install something called minver check, which will check to see what your minimum firmware version is. And this will tell you if your PS3 slim is compatible or not. You do not need to do this if you're on a fat model PS3 because all fats are compatible with custom firmware. And, I, and again, super slims are not compatible in general. So you shouldn't really be watching this video if you're on a super slim at this point. So let's go ahead and check this out. So, so what we wanna do is switch on over to our computer here and we're gonna download Minver Check, as you can see right here from psxplace.com. The link will be in the video description. Just download the zip file right here. Once you have it downloaded, what we're gonna do is format a USB drive. So plug in a USB drive into your computer, and we're gonna be using a program called Rufus to format the drive. You can get Rufus right here from rufus.ie. Again, all the download links will be in the video description. I just use the portable version right here. 
So what we're going to do is open up Rufus first of all, and I'm going to tick the box to list USB hard drives if your USB drive is not automatically detected. And we're going to select our USB device up here. We're going to select non-bootable for the boot selection. We want the partition scheme set to MBR and we want the file system set to FAT32. It doesn't matter if it's regular FAT32 or large FAT32, but it must be FAT32. And then we're going to click start to reformat our USB drive in that format. Make sure you back up any data that was on the drive before reformatting it. So once we've done that, we can then head to our USB drive right here. We can delete these files that it creates in the root of the USB. And in the root of the USB drive, we're going to right click and create a new folder called PS3 in uppercase characters. And then in that folder, we're going to right click and create a new folder called update, which is also in uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, we're going to open up the minver check in 7-zip. Make sure you have 7-zip installed or WinRAR or something that can open 7-zip uh, files. And we're going to extract this ps 3 updatepup file into the update folder. We're just going to copy it into the update folder and we should be good to go. Make sure the file is called ps 3 updatepup in uppercase characters. And make sure if you go to view, show, you want to make sure you're showing file name extensions. Make sure that's ticked. That will be useful later on as well. And it needs to be ps 3 updatepup and you should be good. So all we need to do now is eject this USB drive and plug it in to our PS3. And preferably you want to have it plugged into the rightmost USB port on the PS3, which would be the top USB port if you're having it vertical. So what we're going to do here is head to system update. We're not actually updating the firmware, by the way. We're just going to go to system update and update via storage media. And as you can see, it says version check. So we're going to click OK. And then it's going to tell us our minimum firmware. There we go. Update data of version 1.97 or later can be installed on this system. So basically, if you have a slim PS3, if that version number is 3.56 or lower, you can jailbreak your PS3. You can install custom firmware on your PS3 slim. However, if that number is higher than 3.56, then unfortunately, you cannot install custom firmware on your PS3 Slim, and you'll have to look into installing the PS3 Hen exploit instead. So that is how you can tell if your PS3 Slim is custom firmware compatible. Okay, so next we need to install the hybrid firmware, which will enable an exploit in the web browser that we can then use to install custom firmware. So what we're gonna do first of all is get that hybrid firmware on there. So unplug that USB drive and plug it back into your computer. Okay, and on the computer, we're just going to delete that PS3 folder from our USB drive. So next, we need to download the hybrid firmware for 4.90 by Juni from PSX Place. We're just going to go ahead and click the link here and download the file. We also want an MD5 checker as well. So I use the one here on getmd5checker.com. So just go ahead and download the English one right here and you should be good. So from here, what we're going to do is install the hybrid firmware after we've downloaded it. So here it is here, hybrid firmware 4.90. So we're going to open up this uh, zip file. And in here, we have a PS3 folder. So what we're going to do, of course, is copy that PS3 folder onto the root of our USB drive. So copy the PS3 folder right onto the root of the drive. Do not put it inside any existing folders. And then you should be good there. So if we go into PS3 update, we should have the PS3 updat.pup file in here for the hybrid firmware. And we just want to check the MD5 hash of this file. And we're going to do this by opening up MD5 checker. I'm going to extract that out to my desktop. So we have MD5 checker. We're going to open this up, double click the exe and drag the pup file inside. And that's going to generate the MD5 hash. And then we're going to right click on here and we're going to click on the compare MD5. And then it's going to ask us to enter the hash to compare it with. We're just going to head back here to our hybrid firmware release, copy the MD5 hash from the post, and we're going to paste it in here. And as you can see here, it says it is the same. So if it says it's the same, then that means it has passed and we have the correct file. The reason why we need to do this is that you can install the hybrid firmware, even a corrupted version could be installed on the PS3. The PS3 can accept a corrupted PUP file to install and then it could brick your PS3. So you want to make sure that you didn't get any corruption to the file when you downloaded it 
Uh, so as long as the hashes are the same, you don't have any corruption and you'll be able to successfully install the hybrid firmware. Okay, so now all we need to do is eject that USB drive and plug it in once again to our PS3. Okay, so on the PS3, we're once again going to go to settings, system update, and we're gonna to go to update via storage media. And we're going to select here the 4.90.1 hybrid and exploitable. We're gonna say yes, and let it install the system software update. Now, don't worry too much if you run into any problems installing this update. Like if you get an error message immediately as soon as you try to install it, I'm going to show you another way to install the update uh, once this is successfully installed for me. Okay, and as you can see, we are back with the hybrid firmware installed. Okay, so if that was not successful for you, if you ran into any errors while trying to install the hybrid firmware, I'm going to show you another way to install the firmware, which should work. Also, you need to install the hybrid firmware twice, or it's recommended that you install the hybrid firmware twice. So, you know, even if this was successful for you, then you should go ahead and install it a second time. So the other way to install the hybrid firmware is to use safe mode. So in order to use safe mode, what you need to do is turn off your PS3. So just go ahead and shut down the PS3. So what you want to do is hold down the power button on the PS3 until it beeps twice in rapid succession like this. So when you hear that, it means it's booting into safe mode. It might not do it the first time you try this. So just turn the PS3 off and try it again. It should work within the second or third attempt. So when you hear that rapid beep, it should boot you into safe mode like this. Once you're in safe mode, you want to plug in the charge cable for your controller and then press the PS button on the controller. And then we're going to go down to option number six, which is system update. Obviously, make sure you have the USB drive with the hybrid firmware on there plugged into the PS3's USB port, preferably the rightmost USB port on the system and go to system update and we're going to hit start and select at the same time. So press those two buttons down at the same time. Okay, so it says checking for a while, then it'll do preparing to update and that'll take a little bit. And then once that's done, it kind of reboots the system. Okay, so now you can see it says version 4.90 hybrid firmware, hybrid and exploitable. We press the PS button again. Okay, here we go. And then finally, we get to the user agreement where we're going to accept it and press X to start the update. And so now we just wait for our update here to install. Okay, there we go. So we are back after updating twice. So again, you can use the XMB method to update the system, but if you run into any issues, then you should try and update through safe mode because that is a more robust way of updating the system software, more stable. So I would recommend trying that if you are running into any problems. And things are getting a little bit crowded here on my desktop, so I'm just gonna get rid of the hybrid firmware and Minver check since we're already past that stage now. Okay, so what makes this whole process possible without the BG toolset is the Flash Writer. The Flash Writer has been updated to 4.90. This was a collaborative effort by these developers right here. So what you're gonna wanna do here is download the Flash Writer. Now the Flash Writer needs to be self-hosted. Now there probably will be websites available in the coming few days where you can just go to the website and access a you know, pre-set up version on the internet. However, it's recommended to do this locally, to host it locally for more stability and also just in case any websites go down. Since exploit websites for the PS3 tend to go down a lot recently, um, I would definitely recommend self-hosting this. So that's what we're gonna do right here. So we're gonna download the Flash Writer. So click the button, download the file. And then once you've got it downloaded, you're gonna need something to allow you to host it on your computer. So I'm gonna use XAMPP for this. So I'm just gonna leave this in the video description so that you can download it. Just download the latest version of XAMPP. It's a basic setup installer and just install it to your computer. So once you have it installed, you can just search for it and you'll find the XAMPP control panel. We're gonna open that up. Now, if you have trouble starting the Apache server, then all you need to do is run it as administrator. So right click and run it as administrator instead of launching it normally, and then it should run. So we're gonna click the button here to start the Apache server, and you can see it is now running. We're then going to click the button to go to the Explorer. And then in here, we're gonna go down to the htdocs folder and open up that folder. And you just wanna delete anything that's already in here. There'll probably be a bunch of other files already in here, the kind of sample website that is pre-built into XAMPP. So delete all the files that are in the htdocs folder. And then we're gonna open up the PS3 Flash Writer 
zip file that you downloaded and extract the files into this folder right here, into the htdocs folder. And then you've got it all set up and ready. So to test to see if it's working, you need to get the IP address of your computer, which you can do by just clicking on your network connections here in the bottom right hand corner, right click and go to go to settings. And then if you click on the network that you're currently connected to in here, scroll down, you'll find the IP address, IPv4 address. You can see mine is 192.168.1.34. You just want to copy that address. Obviously, you can get it by opening up the command prompt and typing in IP config as well. So we're going to go ahead and paste that address into the URL bar and press enter. And as you can see here, it is running. So if you can access the website here, then you are successfully hosting it on your computer. And we should be able to access it from outside our network. If you have any firewalls enabled, uh, which you can find, for example, if we open up Windows Defender, if you have Windows Defender, I would recommend disabling the firewall temporarily. So I'm just going to go and disable my private network firewall here. And I'll also do the same for domain and for public as well. Just temporarily, we'll turn it on once we've finished with the exploit setup. But I would recommend doing that because a lot of the time, you know, antivirus firewalls can block the connection to your computer and you don't want that happening. You want to be able to access it from your PS3. Okay, so now we should be good to go. So copy that address, keep a note of that IP address uh, right there. And we're going to switch back over to our PS3. Make sure you still have your USB drive plugged into the PS3. So now we're going to scroll over to our network settings and we're going to go to internet search and we're going to try and go to that IP address. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.234. Now, for some reason, my PS3 likes to do this thing where it just does a Google search instead of actually going directly to the IP. So that's a bit annoying. So what I would recommend doing is if that happens for you, it just does a Google search instead of actually going to the site that you specified. What I'm going to do here is hit the select button and I'm going to add this page to my bookmarks and then I'm going to press options and edit the bookmark and then change the address right here, get rid of everything that's in here, and then just put the IP address in again. So 192.168.234 in my case, and then we'll just press start to go to that address. And then I'll rename this to just the IP address or something right here. And there we go, we'll click OK. And now if I go to the bookmark, it should take me to the page. All right, perfect, OK. so. If, if it took you to the page automatically, then add it to your bookmarks by hitting options and clicking the button to add to bookmarks so that you have the page bookmarked. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make the browser run as lightweight as possible so that you're less likely to run into any errors. And the way we do this is we hit options, we go to tools and we go to delete cookies and we'll say yes. And then again, we'll go to tools and we'll delete the search history and we'll say yes. And then we'll go to tools We'll delete the cache and again say yes and then triangle tools go down and delete the authentication information and select yes to that as well and then finally we're going to press triangle go to tools and then go down to home page and select use a blank page so we're going to select that option and then click ok and then close out of the browser with circle and you should be good so now we're going to open the browser again and now it should be running as lightweight as possible and it'll just take us to a blank page and then we're going to hit the select button and then select the bookmark that you made earlier to go to the website okay here we go so now we need to select whether we have a nor flash or a nand flash so some ps3s have a nor chip some have a nand chip so you need to select the correct one for your console now you can find this information once again on the computer so what we want to do is head to the sku models on psdevwiki.com for PS3. Again, link will be in the description. And what we need to do is take a look at the serial number on your console. Now, the serial number will be somewhere on the back of the console. This is my serial number here on the back of my console. So you can see mine is a CECHM03. So in my case, I'm going to look at the options here, look at the different models. So this is currently for the PS3 FAT models, which is what my PS3 is. So on the PS3 FAT models, if I take a look down, we've got CECHMXX. Mine's an M03, so that is one of these ones right here. And as you can see, mine is a NOR. It says right there, 16 megabyte NOR. 
So I know that my PS3 has a NOR chip, not a NAND chip. Some of the other older fat model PS3s here have NAND chips. Some of the newer fat models have NOR chips. So mine's a NOR system. So make sure you check yours as well. And PS3 Slims, I think, are all NOR anyway, by the looks of things. Yeah, all of the PS3 Slims here for the 2000 models, they're all NOR chips. So once you've figured out whether or not you have a NOR or a NAND chip on your PS3, you select the corresponding option. So in my case, it's a NOR chip. And we've also got the USB drive that we're dumping to. So USB 000 should be the USB port, the rightmost USB port that you should have the USB stick plugged into. And then in my case, I'm going to select NOR because I have a NOR chip. If you have a NAND chip, you would select NAND. So I'm going to select NOR here. And there we go. Successfully found all variable offsets. And then we're going to click Run Checks. Checking minimum firmware version. So this is checking to make sure your PS3 is compatible. Downloading patch file. So as you can see here, it says there's a patch file with the same name and the same destination. You may have that, you may not. I've already ran this once already when I was checking it out. So I'm going to click Overwrite and Save. And there we go. Download completed. So we'll press back. And let it continue with its checks. Okay, there we go. We get all checks passed. Now, if you ran into any errors, again, I would recommend just clearing all of your website data again, just like we did before, and then reopening the browser and trying again. Maybe clear the stuff on your USB and try it again as well. Okay, and if you're still running into issues, maybe try a different USB stick or reformat the USB stick in FAT32 format. So what we're gonna do now, when we get this option, dump NOR flash memory or NAND flash memory, if you have a NAND system, we're going to select that option and it's going to start dumping the NOR flash to the USB stick. So PS3 flash dump 900 firmware.bin. This may take a few minutes, so just leave it to do its thing. Okay, and now we get dump operation successful. Please ensure your flash dump was written to your USB drive and verify its integrity before proceeding to patch. This is very important. Do not just immediately go and hit the patch flash memory option. We do not want to do that right now. We want to check to make sure that that dump is successful that we have a good dump of our NOR or NAND flash. So we're gonna unplug the USB drive right now and plug it back into our computer. Okay, so here's our USB drive plugged back into the computer. You can see we now have a PS3 flash dump for 4900 firmware. So what we wanna do is copy that somewhere safe on our computer. I'll call it PS3 uh, flash dump. And we'll go ahead and copy it in there so it's safe on our computer. And then we need to go ahead and get PS3 Checker. So you can get PS3 Checker from this GitHub page right here from Little Bullop. So PS3 Tools, you're just going to go to the code and download it as a zip file. Download that and you're also going to need Python version 2.7. It must be version 2.7 of Python in order for this script to work. So just go ahead and download the installer right here for Python and install Python if you don't already have it installed. I have 3.9 or something installed, so I need to also install here uh, version 2.7 of Python before I proceed. So I'll just go ahead and install it right now. Okay, there we go. Installation complete. We can hit finish and we are good. Okay, so now we can use the PS3 checker application. So we're gonna open up PS3 tools zip file. We're gonna go into PS3 tools master and then we've got PS3 checker. I'm just gonna drag that out here to my desktop and we should be good here. So if we open PS3 Checker, what we want to do is grab our flash dump file and we're going to extract it here into this folder. And what we want to do then is drag it from this folder on top of the drag and drop your dump here dot bat. So we're going to let go and it should do its thing. So as you can see here, it says checks completed. Total number of checks, 155 number of dangers, zero, number of warnings, zero. That's what you're looking for there. Uh, you wanna make sure that uh, number of dangers is set to zero. Warnings are okay. You can have a few warnings, I believe, and you know you can still have a good dump. But if you have any dangers, then you have a bad dump and you'll have to go and do that again. Restart the browser, plug the USB drive back in and get to that same stage where it dumps the NOR or NAND flash to your USB and then run it through the checker again. Keep doing that until you get a good dump. As you can see here, zero danger, zero warnings. That's what we like to see. Uh, by the way, it looks like there is a Python 3 version 
of the script. So I was wrong. It doesn't have to be Python version 2.7. I guess you could also just have Python version 3 installed and then just drag the file over the underscore py3 version and then that will run the Python 3 version of the script. So uh, yeah, just uh, the more you know. Okay, so now we know that's good. We can copy that bin file back into our PS3 flash dump folder and just keep that somewhere safe on your computer uh, in case you ever need to use it to fix your PS3 if it ever gets bricked in future. And what we're going to do is eject the USB drive, plug it back into the PS3 and we can continue with the patching process. So once again, I have the USB drive plugged into the rightmost USB port on the PS3 and we'll just give it a few seconds to make sure that the PS3 has had time to recognize the USB. And then once that's done, we can then hit the button to patch the NOR flash memory. Patching NOR flash memory. This may take a few minutes. Do not power off your console. So again, you just want to leave it to do its thing. Give it a few minutes uh, for it to patch the NOR or NAND flash. And this is what then allows you to install custom firmware files. So you'll then be able to install the custom firmware update. Okay, there we go. As you can see, it is done. Patch operation successful. You can now reboot your PS3 and install a custom firmware of your choice. Perfect. So our PS3 is now patched to allow us to install custom firmware without using the BG toolset. Although it, it has been a very involved process, I will admit. Okay, so now what we need to do is restart the PS3 because the changes do not take effect until you've rebooted. So we're going to go ahead and turn the system off and restart it right here. So turn it off, wait for it to power down and then turn it back on. Okay, so we've now rebooted our PS3. So we're now ready to install the custom firmware. So don't worry, we're on the last hurdle now. So all we need to do now is switch back over once again to our computer. And I guess we can re-enable our uh, firewall and everything before we forget. Because we still have that disabled. I'll turn all my firewall settings back on. So we're protected. Okay, so... Now we need to install the custom firmware. So we can get our custom firmware from this post right here on PSX Place. Once again, this is by uh, Wildcard who posted this. And the custom firmware itself is by Evil Nat. So this is Evil Nat's custom firmware for 4.90. So this is Cobra version 8.4. Now you, what you want to do is install the Kex version. So if you have anything wrong with your PS3, you might want to install some of these other versions. But in my case, I'm just downloading the top one right here. So if we click this button, it takes us over here. And then from here, we're going to select uh, the option right here and download it. So we download the custom firmware. And once it's downloaded, as you can see right here, we're going to once again copy it over to our USB drive. So make sure your USB drive is plugged in once again to your computer. We're going to go to our USB drive, our PS3 folder, our update folder. We're going to delete the hybrid firmware pup file uh, from our USB. And then we're going to open up our custom firmware and we're going to go to ps3 update ps3 updat.pup and again we're going to drag that into our update folder on our usb drive okay so we've got our custom firmware ready and then once again we're going to open up the md5.txt file that's in here and this gives us our md5 hash we're going to copy it and once again we're going to verify our md5 hash of the file with md5 checker so we're going to open up md5 checker drag the pup file inside and then right click and go to compare md5 and then paste in the md5 hash that you copied from the text file. If it says it's the same, then you have a good copy of our custom firmware file, no corruption. So now we're all ready to go. If I go back to the root of the USB drive, I can delete this flash dump file now since I have a backup of it already on the computer. You can also put any homebrew on your USB drive now as well that you want to install. So I'm going to copy Multiman to the root of my USB drive, which is a very useful homebrew application. So I've gone ahead and copied it here. You can download homebrew from Brewology. You can go to store.brewology.com to download your homebrew. Just go to the homebrew section and download any applications you want to use. Uh, also, Multiman has its own separate section here. So in my case, I went to Multiman and I just downloaded the base version right here. You want to make sure you're not downloading the one that's got hen written on it because that is for the ps3 hen exploit which is a different exploit to what we're using so any homebrew that you download make sure you don't download the hen version make sure you're downloading the proper version for custom firmware and even though it says it's for 4.85 it will most likely work on 4.90 as well there's not a lot of changes in these updates so 
it should be good to go. So I just went ahead and downloaded that version there and I copied it over to the root of my USB. Okay, so now we can go ahead and eject that drive, plug it back into the PS3 for the last time to install our custom firmware. Okay, so here we are once again on our PS3. So we're gonna go over to system update, update via storage media. And as you can see, we have 4.90 Evil Nat PEX showing up right there. We're gonna click OK and do the system update. So we're gonna go over to the license agreement, accept it, and we'll go over here and click the start button to install our custom firmware. And again, just like when we were installing the hybrid firmware, if you run into any issues while trying to install the system update through the XMB, you can use the same safe mode technique we used before to update the system, which again is a safer way of updating uh, your system software, less chance of running into errors. So if you do run into any issues with the XMB version, just go into safe mode and update from the USB drive in safe mode. Okay, hopefully you saw that. It said evil Nat there popped up after installing that. And that means we do indeed have custom firmware installed. So custom firmware is fully installed. Just to prove it, if you go into the PlayStation Network section and you scroll down, you can see you've got title store preview and store preview. And if we go to the game section, you've got the package manager, which allows us to sideload other applications like homebrew apps onto our PS3. So for example, I can go into package manager. I can go to install package files from standard from a storage device. And then that shows our multi-man package that is on our USB drive that we can install. So I'll hit install and that installs our homebrew application onto our PS3. There we go, install completed. We can now run multi-man. And here's our first launch of a homebrew app on our newly jailbroken PS3. Okay, here we go, multi-man loading up, running on our jailbroken PS3. And yeah, here we go. We now have multi-man up and running. We've got the file manager so we can access the file system of our PS3 can switch back to multi-man view. So that is how you fully jailbreak the PS3 on firmware 4.90 or up to firmware 4.90 uh, without using the BG toolset. So yeah, I know it would be a lot easier if we just used one of the clone tool sets. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me for the few people who are still here at the end of the video, especially since um, you could have gone off and just watched a quicker tutorial that uses one of those cloned tool sets. But again, there is a much higher risk of bricking your PS3 when using those. So thanks for sticking with me here through this tutorial to show you guys how to do it the safer way, even though it's definitely a lot more complicated and takes quite a bit longer. And I'll also have a new video for PS3 Hen for 4.90 once that's available. So keep an eye out for that tutorial coming soon for those of you that are on PS3s that are not custom firmware compatible. And thanks, of course, to all the developers who made this possible without having to use the BG toolset. Like, of course, Evil Nat, Costrez, One, Little Ballup, Juni, Wildcard, and more. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.